and welcome to News Click. I am Sumedha Pal. Today we are having an extremely important discussion as we commemorate, celebrate the legacy of journalist Gauri Lankesh. Gauri Lankesh was attacked and brutally killed three years ago, and today we are having this very important discussion with her sister Kavita Lankesh, who is also a filmmaker. Thank you, Kavita, for joining us and discussing and discussing Gauri's legacy with us, sharing your insights with us today. To begin our discussion, the first thing that we'd like to know from you is that it's been three years, and over the past three years, of course, Gauri's legacy, her presence, and her journalism have, of course, inspired so many people. And also, there have been the state of journalism in India has also changed quite rapidly. So I want to know from you how you see her legacy in the present times, how you reflect on her work post her death. Um, and and the the current state of affairs uh, of the media and press freedom. Yeah, see, first of all, uh, I think Gauri became a journalist inspired from by my father, P. Lankesh, and as you know, he was one of the few journalists who who was very very bold in his statement, and he was uh, always stood against corruption and you know against any exploitation of the minorities or anybody. So that way. And uh, my father was the one who actually brought down governments through his newspaper by exposing a lot of, uh, you know, um, inadequacies in the government then. But whoever the government be, he always used to say journalism should be, you know, a watch, a watchful eye on the, journal, on the government. Not like the present times when it's become like a pamphlet for the government, basically. You know, that's what the media has come down to. And Gaudi believed in his, uh, in his ideals and that's how she stood to call the paper uh, in fact, that was one of the only newspapers which had no advertisements because my father said, though we could have made more, much more money at that time, because it was very popular, he said, no, I'm not going to bow down to any advertisements because then it becomes, you know, commercialized. And also we are going to bow down to all these corporates or even governments because we are expecting ads from governments to run a paper. So he was very, very few newspapers, as you know, in the world can run without advertisements. And he did that. And when Gauri took it over, she said, I'm going to abide by the same principles. Though she was floundering and there was not much money, but she still stuck, stuck to her guns and she said, no, I'm going to continue my father's legacy that way. Though my father never said, Gauri should run it or somebody should run it. He just uh, didn't, I mean, he thought his ideas should run on. You know, that was the only thing. And Gauri, in fact, as you know, she came from English journalism and she was at that point working for different um, newspaper in Delhi and a television channel. And when my father died, she came back and actually her Canada was not that good. And you know, she's learned Kannada over the years. Of course, we could all speak Kannada very well and read, but we were not, when you compare him, her to us to my father, who had a you know, great, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, mastery over the language, we didn't have that and we still don't actually. But uh, she took it over and, uh, as mantle and she said, I'm going to learn. And in fact, she really became very good at it. At the same time, I think uh, coming down to regional journalism, she was very, very much more, she went very grassroots level. Just like my father, when he did, he brought literature, everything to the grassroots level. You know, he was not on a pedestal and talking down to people that way. So the same idealism Gauri took over and uh, she could run the paper that way. And of course, she dealt with a lot more local news and a lot more local issues and fought for the rights of the minorities, women, children, you know, this kind of, so it, it went on like that. And I think right now, what when you ask me, it's, it's much more vital somebody like Gauri be there. And I'm thankful for a handful of journalists, a handful of independent journalism like you also, you know, many other, the wire or people like that who are trying to go on and, you know, be uh, news on the um, internet and uh, you know, uh, online, basically newspapers, because uh, to survive, you know, it's been very difficult. If uh, Gauri, as you know, when she died, when I mean, she was assassinated, she had 80 cases uh, on her. So people, I mean, I mean, I don't mind the cases. At least it was tolerant in that way. Unlike as my as as my father would say, we were never. Uh, many people ask me, were you scared or was Gauri scared? But we were never thought our lives was a danger or Gauri's life was a danger because we come from the family of Lanka. It was much more bolder than any of us put together. But in spite of that, I think the country is becoming increasingly intolerant. If I say that, maybe I'll also be called anti-national and has to leave the country. And as to go to Pakistan, I, I keep saying, please give me a ticket somewhere else to New Zealand or anywhere. I mean, you know, I don't want to go to Pakistan. But this is the state of affairs. The intolerance has become much more 
there's been very much a lot of polarizing as kanaya kumar rightly said it's not just divide and rule but it's divide divert and rule yes. you know the yes. media is covering it, i i think it's it's a it's it's a joke the way the media covers anything these days especially television in, in these times it's in in canada if you see the whole corona covid cases instead of uh, concentrating on many of the issues which the migrants were put to problem because of the sudden lockdown and everything they were covering all sorts of nonsensical thing and the kind of music they gave it became like a horror story so i can imagine what gauri would have said at these times everything i get back to her and say what would gauri say against caca what happened against the assam uh, you know migrant workers and everything we I would, i'm always questioning myself what would she say in the current scenario and of course she would be very very disappointed i think very very angry and resentful of the whole happenings around our society yeah. but at the same time i'm i'm sure she would have a smile and hope also like you know either for the future yeah. otherwise this is, you can't fight it out you can't be a you know you can't protest anything like that without having the try to question the government question the media question journalism ethics itself these days so this is very important and these questions keep bothering me knowing she is not there anymore and uh, yeah. how are you continuing uh, with the newspaper uh, what is happening over there with the publication the publication uh, i was not involved in it when she was alive as well but when she when she was killed uh, her group of friends and activist friends and few journalists got together and they wanted to start something called nanu gauri but at that time the permission was not given by the central uh, you know uh, so they started something called nyaya patha and that's doing all right but the more than that nanu gauri on the net is doing very well that's doing a lot of uh, you know a lot of readership has been has been gathering so it's fine i mean whoever does it it's not like as i said it's not a legacy it's not a property yes. in, in the sense of physical property where you can bequeath to somebody so even my father never expected even gauri didn't expect it but i'm happy that there's still that whole group is there trying to voice out to be the voice of the marginalized you know fight for the issue, rightful issues and things like that so i'm happy that they're doing a good job yes and of course the ideas that you mentioned that it is not a property it's a legacy that she uh, has instilled in so many of us that we, that who read her who have uh, believed in her ideas and the fact to do journalism which is bold which is questioning those in power how do you see the kind of religious fanaticism that is taken over the press as well as in the community as a whole uh, like you were mentioning earlier she would smile and she would of course be very disappointed what do you think she would have said in terms of reflecting on the kind of coverage that we see of a lot of things be it the migrant workers be it uh, the the marginalized communities yeah absolutely see for instance the whole corona when it started the whole the way tablighis were in attacked and questioned and every every even in my neighborhood to everywhere the polarizing was so much that every muslim was looked at every minority was looked at with hate and with uh, you know with the kind of as it is we have a social taboos the social distancing is a bad word as uh, you know eventually it happened that is physical distancing we have all come out with social distancing i mean in mean, the whole past we have been the dalits have been you know this whole we have our country is such that there's always been untouchability there's always been you know difference of polarizing but these days with the media it's really really worse it's becoming worse and it's 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 really people are not worried about the joblessness of youth and people are not bothered about even as you said the marginalized workers the migrants who are left on the road without even getting a free train ticket to their own native place so these are very 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 disturbing sights and you know issues which we have to talk about but we instead what are we talking about we are talking about you know religion we are talking about the polarizing we are talking about dividing the hating other people people come i mean they say them them and us i said who is them who is us you know this is the kind of situation it's been it's been really it was a very subtle thing earlier you know we would at least have the decorum and decency people would have to talk or not show it out openly now the hatred and lynching has become so common nobody is bothered nobody is talking about it and i'm sure gauri would have been really really she would have been forefront of all these issues and fighting for it i mean in the sense she used to tell me earlier as i've told numerous times why don't you come for this protest and that protest and of course my protest was in the form of my film my my art and everybody can be here to say but after she is gone i have been to many of the protests and i have been sitting on the steps of town hall the center place of protest in bangalore 
And uh, yeah, I've been thinking of her and I hope she's proud of me at some point, a little bit because I'm not so vocal. Because if something like that, a murder, an assassination can happen within your family, you do get a little weary and scared to talk and voice out. Because you know, as the social media becomes full of hatred, if you post anything, even something as inconsequential as maybe poor migrant, why would they put in this position? There's a lot of trolling happening, saying as if you did something, what is up? The hate, hate filled messages. So I don't know, it's a very, very intolerant society we are living in and very shallow it's becoming because nobody is going in depth. I mean, Gauri was, would help me that way, you know, in, in, in my scripts or in any social issues or political issues. When I talked to her, she would always tell me and, you know, we, we would go into in depth about it. So that kind of thing we don't have in our society anymore. We're all armchair activists and filled with opinionated, opinionated uh, people. So it's very, very dangerous and difficult times. And it is this kind of fanaticism and the polarization that you're referring to that led to her assassination because there was no tolerance for uh, truth or no tolerance for this in-depth research or uh, the facts. And so what's uh, the, the battle and uh, the case has been extremely difficult for you, of course. So what is happening legally on that uh, front? What is going on with, uh, uh, with her killers? Oh, I mean, uh, uh, one thing is it was commendable of the SIT Karnataka to do an amazing job and they've got all the, you know, all about 19 people are, in, uh, you know, arrested. And of course, uh, and they have a very tight case that way and I'm happy about that. Though, of course, we had none, we had no hope at all in the beginning because they were also floundering for the first three, four months. They were like looking in the dark and, uh, but at the same time, after the first arrest of uh, one uh, Naveen, things started falling into place. And I'm happy that I'm in touch with uh, Gawalkar's son, Hamid and uh, Mega Pansari and uh, Vijay Kalburgi here, since it's all connected. And uh, we were asking, actually in the stage of asking the court to have a maybe special court to fast track the case, because that's where it is uh, taking a lot of time. And I'm happy that uh, there have been uh, applications for bail, but nobody has been given bail and uh, they've rejected it. Uh, I, I wish the government has, uh, you know, uh, which the government really constitute a special court and hear the case faster because it otherwise it can go on for years, as you know, because it's not just my sister's murder. And at the same time, as, as you know, the list of uh, when, the, when they found the diary of one of the guys, they found a lot more people in it, you know, who is going to be targeted in the next. So, but uh, thankfully, because of uh, so many people caught, they, that, the new future plans have been thwarted a bit. But I don't know when they will, uh, if they will rise up, make another team and things like that. So I think it's important. They're really punished according to the law. So there'll be some justice for all the murders, not just Gauris. Yes. And speaking of justice, speaking of, you know, the targeting that happens, and this is, this is targeting which happened across lines, rationalists, journalists have been targeted. And there is a sustained movement that many of the people across cities are now trying to run to draw on the legacy of Gauri, to draw on the legacy of uh, Mr. Dhabulkar, to speak about the truth, to speak about uh, rational ideas, and to hope uh, that, you know, the larger public would be able to see it. So what is the kind of uh, a way forward that we see in terms of the movement, in terms of the messaging that should go out to people? I think, as I told you, a lot of independent journalism is very important and it's important that people, secular people who believe in democracy, who believe in constitution, who believe in uh, justice, should really support uh, independent journalism, independent media or even single individual voices. It's important a lot of uh, support is gathered. Otherwise, as I said, the whole media, social media is filled with invisible trollers who can bring your spirits down. I mean, I, I remember, I mean, I, you, as you all are aware that Gauri also was trolled and so much hate message she had got. So that kind of thing can, you know, really kill a spirit and actually make you think self-censorship is what I call it. We might think, why do we need to bother about all this? Let's just keep quiet or let's not get into it. I mean, I myself have gone through that. In fact, when Gauri was alive, we in this very same place we were discussing once and I posted something and I uh, started getting messages, hate messages against me, my family, everybody, which is completely relevant. I'm talking about environment. And it was like hateful. And I started replying back and Gaudi said, no, don't do it. Just don't look at the, you know, replies or anything. But I, I'm not the type. So I had to delete the whole, uh, whatever I posted. 
But in spite of it, at least what I believe in, I'm retweeting, reposting. And of course, things I believe in, I have to do it. Though my daughter is very reluctant because she's put it on her, this thing, whenever I tweet, she gets a message. So she says, don't do it, you know. So there's a lot of fear in terms because it can happen in anybody's family. A brutal murder like this can really put a fear in your mind. But at least the least we can do is speak about it, I guess. That kind of uh, freedom of space, freedom of expression, if you don't have, what is the point of living? I mean, you know, it's important, I think. Of course, I'll always show my opinion, my issues through my films. But at the same time, it's also important to show solidarity with people who are fighting for such issues. So, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, you know, doing my bit, I think, yeah, through because of Gauri and Puff, completely all because of my sister. Yeah. On that note, I think it's a very special thing that you said that the least that we can do uh, for our country, for our communities, is to speak up, is to show solidarity. And Kavita, thank you so, so much for sharing all these insights with us. I really value it and uh, I hope uh, our viewers found it very insightful as well. Thanks for speaking uh, to us again. Thank you.